today the tax and income status of the richest New Zealanders. Inland Revenue is set to estimate the effective tax rate of the wealthiest families in the country, taking into account their full economic income rather than just taxable income. Deloitte partner Patrick McKelman thinks we'll see they're paying less than the highest 39% tax rate. He says that reflects us not having a capital gains tax or taxing economic income. By that I mean if an asset increases in value, we don't typically tax it unless that's what your business is. So people who've made those gains, whether they're high net worth or otherwise, won't have paid tax on those. That report's due out at 12.30. Also out today, this time at 10am, is the latest advice on the future of New Zealand's emissions reduction plan. The draft recommendations from the Climate Change Commission will reveal the urgent actions the government must take to meet its emissions budget for 2026 to 2030. New Zealand is aiming to reduce its emissions by nearly 20%, compared with average annual emissions from 2017 to 2021. Belief New Zealand could play a key role in how the world grapples with the rapid evolution of artificial intelligence. In recent months, multiple fake computer generated images and audio have gone viral online, some nearly impossible to distinguish their authenticity. And it's led to concerns over the potential impact AI could play in our political landscape. Psychologist and AI commentator Paul Dignan says our politicians should be actively considering how to address it. And I think we could really step up to this as a kind of a world leader in addressing these kinds of issues about how we can use this new technology responsibly and avoid the downsides of it. Doc is confident its booking system will run smoothly as the next lot of great walks open. Thousands of trampers were left annoyed last week, spending up to an hour trying to log onto the system for the popular Milford track. Bookings for the Kepler, Abel Tasman and Rakiota tracks, as well as the Whanganui Journey, open at 9.30 this morning. Auckland plays host to the country's final cruise ship stop of the summer today. More than 165,000 passengers have visited the city across 93 port halls in the first season back since the pandemic-induced pause. Destination management company ID Tours executive director Debbie Summers is also the former chair of the Cruise Association. She says across the country, cruise passengers have contributed to around half a billion dollars in economic regeneration. Summers says just for Auckland alone, we're looking at a spend of around $200 million, calculated at $250 per passenger per day. The US president is urging voters to give him four more years to finish what he started. Joe Biden has formally announced his campaign for re-election in 2024. The 80-year-old warns America remains under threat from the anti-democratic forces unleashed by his predecessor who he beat in 2020. Biden says the country is on the cusp of major change. Now we've just got to keep it going, finish the job. We just have to remember who we are. We are the United States of America. There's nothing, nothing, nothing beyond our capacity. Nothing. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel to stay up to date with all the latest news from the New Zealand Herald. Click the subscribe button below or check out one of the videos here and head over to nzherald.co.nz for more details on these stories and more.